Thank you very much. Thank you, Dr. Singh. Good morning, and thank you. Um, so again, I'm the clinical fellow at Beth Israel Deaconess. Uh, I like to talk about OR, fill, OR, OR fire drills and simulation. A little bit of background, depending on whose data you look at, operating fires occur between two and 500 times a year, uh, reflecting an incidence of 0.32 to 0.67 incidents per 100,000 cases. About 21%, as previously discussed, occur in the airway itself, about 44% in the head, neck, face, or upper chest. Uh, about a third of these lead to harm to the patient, with 20 to 30 leading to severe harm, up to and including death. Uh, in 1995, it was uh, designated by the Joint Commission as a surgical patient safety event, later joined by retained surgical items and the three surgical gongs. Uh, if we look at the data gathered by the Joint Commission over time, for retention of foreign objects, you can see that it's downtrending over the last several years, which is what we would hope to see. Uh, the same can be found for the uh, surgical wrongs. Again, a nice downtrending slope. If you look at OR fires, you don't see that. You see arguably an increase in events over time. Now, some people would say that that's a reporting artifact. You could argue that given the increasing number of surgical procedures every year, that it's actually remaining flat in, raw in, uh, in uh, incidents. Either way, we're not showing the level of improvement that we would hope to see, like with the other two uh, events. So when we're thinking about etiology, I think it's helpful to go back to middle school science to talk about the OR, or correction, about the fire triangle. Uh, in daily life, we're fairly familiar with this, sources of oxygen being room air, open flames, hiring, uh, wiring, et cetera. Uh, in the OR, the oxygen obviously becomes concentrated with the face mask and ventilator tubing leaks. Uh, sources of heat can become a little more subtle with electrocautery and lasers, et cetera. Uh, there's not a lot of wood in the OR, but we do have a lot of paper cloth, alcohol, anesthetics, et cetera, things that we previously discussed. Um, if we look back at incidents, it makes sense that the vast majority would be caused by electrosurgical energy, uh, uh, lasers for the other 10%, and then a mixed bag for the remainder after that. Um, but what do we do about it? So there are a lot of guidelines and recommendations. AORN recommends uh, fire drills. They dictate roles for each person that's in the OR. And they provide some guidelines for risk mitigation with the use of electrosurgical energy, et cetera. Uh, the Emergency Care Research Institute is a nonprofit organization. Um, it focuses on education, it helps with reporting and surveillance of incidents, and it helps with preparation and prevention as well as the investigation of occurrences that have already happened. Uh, facilities, of course, have their own uh, tailored recommendations and guidelines, and then FUSE. I'm not going to belabor this point, but I think we can all agree that better understanding equals better safety for our patients. Uh, at Beth Israel, we do have a robust simulation center. Uh, we train virtually everyone that comes into the OR in some form or fashion. Um, we also train procedural-based providers that do not necessarily spend time in the OR, such as intensivists, ER physicians, et cetera. We draw a lot of students from the surrounding area, ranging from uh, high school students that are interested in medicine, med students, all the way up to visiting professors, international professors uh, from across the oceans. Um, we have a laparoscopic skills lab that's available 24 hours a day for improvement and retention of skills. Uh, we have ongoing investigations into virtual reality modality for the acquisition and improvement of surgical skills, as well as a full uh, operating room suite for uh, simulation of OR events and procedures. Uh, we have a longstanding process of OR team training uh, where we partnered with our insurance provider. Uh, we have uh, OR teams come into the room. Uh, we go through a process where we simulate perioperative codes and ACLS events. Uh, we uh, simulate a severe intraoperative hemorrhage uh, with control procedures. And then we simulate the identification and recover your retained uh, surgical objects. We do this on a monthly basis with the goal of having each operating room provider or operating room personnel coming through on an annual basis. It's been going fairly well. We've had a lot of success with this over time. So given the failure to improve uh, operating room fire incidents and the severity events, as well as the immediacy of event, we thought that this would be an excellent uh, candidate to roll into our OR team training model. Uh, so late last year, we started rolling this out. We've done it on a quarterly basis. We do the same general model where we have people who work in the OR come down to the, to the simulation center, and then we roll through a simulated event uh, involving an OR fire. Um, we use a didactic session with discussion prior to the event uh, where we do a fair amount of education. Uh, we discuss individual roles, et cetera. We have the simulated event itself. And then we have a uh, feedback session afterwards, both in the, in the form of discussion and in uh, written surveys. Um, our objectives have been the discussion of the components of a fire, as we discussed with the uh, fire triangle, 
uh, to make sure people understand the increased risk and, and uh, how the OR fire contributes in the correction the fire triangle contributes in the OR itself. Um, we've been educating the members of the OR team on their individual roles. We don't want them to be reinventing the wheel. We don't want them to be duplicating efforts. We want them to operate as a team in the event that a fire breaks out. And then we've been informing members of the OR on guidelines and recommendations that they can find on their own to maintain their own proficiency in this field after they leave the simulation center. Uh, so this is going to be a simulated event, one of our early iterations where we're going to use a uh, laparoscope to simulate uh, starting a fire on the drapes. So, Do we have sound? Test move, medical record 2499134, date of birth is 0303-1940. He has no known drug allergies and got Kefsal, two grams IV. All right, pneumo boots are on and activated, no heparin needed for the procedure. And the procedure, please. Laparoscopic cold cystectomy. Okay, and that mark, uh, matches the booking as well as the consent. And we don't need any radiological images for this patient. And everything's in the room that uh, is going to be needed for the case. Does anyone have anything else to add? No. No, sounds good. All right, so if uh, timeout's done and we're ready, Paul, can you give me a quick story and we'll get started? Yeah, white balance is done. Thank you. All right, so, so this is a 32-year-old male. Um, he has uh, cholecystitis, so we're about to start a cholecystectomy. Dr. Smith got pulled away, so he was hoping he'd be able to come in. The drape is smoking. Off. What? The hey, drape. the drape's on fire. Oh, uh, Mike, can you move the Mayo stand, please? Jeff, can you please disconnect all the wires? Paul, can you help me get this drape yep. off right away? Sure. Yeah, let me, uh, I turned down the oxygen. Oh. Uh, look, Mike, there's still a flame on the drape. Can you please douse that? Excellent. All right, there seems to be no more flame. I think it's out. Hi, this all is right. Jeff in OR2. We just had a fire in the drape. Can you activate the alarm system and call a code red? Okay, guys, why don't we uh, assess look the at patient the for there. injury? I don't see any burn. Okay, there doesn't seem to be any injury to the patient. Good job, guys. So that was one of our first iterations again. Uh, we were pretty happy with the results. We had a, a uh, smoke simulator, smoke generator uh, tunnel underneath or inside the, the uh, mannequin, and it seemed to work pretty well. Uh, we've been getting a fair amount of uh, positive feedback. Obviously, we're early in the, in the process of developing the system, but based on our results from our surveys and our feedback sessions, uh, we're expecting a, a fairly significant improvement in the education and preparedness of our providers and hopefully a, a, a significant improvement in patient safety. Thank you.